Lightyear launches world's first production-ready solar-powered electric car. Dutch startup Lightyear has unveiled its Lightyear Zero electric car that has five square meters of curved solar panels integrated into the Lightyear Zero car's roof, bonnet, and tailgate, which will convert renewable solar energy into electric power for driving. The car is powered by traditional electric charging and solar power, meaning people would be able to drive while simultaneously charging from sunlight. After six years of research and development, design, engineering, prototyping, and testing, the solar-powered electric car is slated to go into production in November at a cost of $250,000 per unit. Tests undertaken by Lightyear estimate that the solar cells can add up to 70 kilometers or 44 miles per day to the car's 388-mile range from traditional charging. In sunny climates such as Spain or Portugal, the brand said that an average driver covering 35 kilometers or 22 miles per day could use the car for seven months without it needing to be charged at a public or household outlet. In colder climates, such as the Netherlands, it could last for two months without needing to be recharged. Difficulties recharging electric cars and finding convenient and available charging stations is a major reason that discourages consumers from purchasing or using electric cars. The British government has attempted to counter this problem with legislation that will require all new homes and non-domestic buildings in England to have electric vehicle charging points. Lightyear hopes to combat this with its car that charges while drivers are on the go. The car's touchscreen dashboard gives users cloud-based updates including charging status, how much solar energy is being absorbed, and which solar panels are soaking in the sun's rays at any given moment. When plugged into a regular household power socket, Drivers can charge over 300 kilometers or 186 miles of range overnight, and Lightyear Zero can charge two times faster than a comparable electric vehicle with a similar battery size. Measuring 5 meters long and weighing 1,575 kilograms, the electric car has a top speed of 160 kilometers per hour and can accommodate five passengers. The electric car's body is made from panels of reclaimed carbon fiber and aluminum, and instead of mirrors, Lightyear Zero has four cameras, one for rear view, one for parking, and two side cameras. Overall, the electric car has a drag coefficient of less than 0.19, which is extremely low and means that the car consumes less energy and can therefore drive further. The interior of Lightyear Zero is made from vegan and naturally sourced materials such as ecological microfiber suede seats and rat and palm detailing. Lightyear plans to produce 946 solar-powered electric cars this year and said that its next model, which is being designed for high-volume production in late 2024, will come at a more affordable starting price point of €30,000. In recent years, there has been a surge of interest in electric cars that use solar energy. For instance, German car brand Mercedes-Benz partnered with the late fashion designer Virgil Abloh on a solar-powered electric car that has a transparent front bonnet. German automaker Audi has collaborated with Chinese solar cell specialist Hanergy to develop thin solar panels that can be integrated into car roofs. Overall, it seems like solar-powered electric cars are slowly but surely approaching widespread use in the consumer market. New Soil Batteries to Store Solar Power Underground Solar power could be stored in the ground by using Earth's teeming microbial life to transfer energy. This is just one of dozens of bright ideas that has just got a major funding boost from the UK government. As with sand and water batteries, a plentiful natural resource is being called on by researchers at Cardiff University to help solve the problem of renewable energy storage. As a result, UK Research and Innovation is investing £15 million in this budding technology. The researchers first got their idea from reading about a concrete battery, which used a chemical process. This led them to wonder whether a biochemical process might not have more to offer. The plan is to send electricity from solar panels to buried electrodes, thereby stimulating certain bacteria in the soil. The premise is this. If you make energy available to microorganisms, they'll use it in some way to survive. Just like providing food, if you provide electrical energy, organisms can use it to perform electrosynthesis, where they synthesize carbon-based molecules from carbon dioxide. It's akin to photosynthesis where plants intake CO2 and transform it in their cells, except in this case, everything is happening underground instead. Electric power, CO2, action. The microbial life gets to work using the energy to reduce the carbon dioxide in order to produce a more complex molecule called acetate. This acetate, 
which researchers describe as being the same sort of molecule found in vinegar minus the acid, acts as a chemical store of energy. When needed, another circuit, known as a microbial fuel cell, is switched on, which activates a different set of bacteria to break down the acetate. These feasting microbes release electrons which flow through the circuit, providing electricity on demand. Soil is incredibly diverse. One teaspoon contains more than 10,000 species of microbes. The researchers want to utilize some of the organisms that already exist, selecting the best ones for the job by creating optimal conditions for them. One advantage of the idea is it doesn't require resource-limited or hazardous chemicals like lithium that are used in other battery technologies. It creates organic molecules that are often present in the soil anyway that are produced naturally by microorganisms in smaller quantities. In the long term, these batteries could be set up below fields of solar panels. But as the microbial fuel cells only supply low voltages for now, their use in relatively low power systems is more imminent. Soil-based solar power batteries could power sensors, lighting systems, communications for off-grid homes or highway infrastructure. The researchers aim to scale up this tech by joining hundreds of cells together to produce a far higher voltage. New motionless technology harnesses wind energy from rooftops. University of Houston spin-off Aramine Technologies has developed a rooftop wind energy system that's more compact than a typical turbine and works with wind speeds as low as 5 miles per hour, whereas traditional small turbines require average wind speeds of at least 9 miles per hour. One of these units can generate as much power as an array of 16 solar panels while taking up 10% of the roof space, and when manufactured at scale, the system could generate significantly more energy than a rooftop solar panel installation of the same price. Aramine's wind energy system doesn't look anything like a traditional turbine. Instead of spinning blades atop a thin pole, it features a motionless tank-like cylinder that's flanked by airfoils. As the wind hits the unit's airfoils, it creates a negative pressure that sucks the wind that's hitting the building through an internal propeller on the bottom of the unit, which creates the energy production connecting directly to the building. The company envisions 20 to 40 of these units lined up along whichever edge of a rooftop is facing the direction that gets the most wind, leaving room in the center of the roof for solar panels. If coupled with solar panels, these wind units provide a path towards achieving on-site energy independence. Aramine's wind energy system couldn't be installed on slanted roofs or single-family homes, but it could make on-site wind power generation possible for warehouses, apartment buildings, or other large, flat roof structures. The company has already validated its rooftop wind energy tech through joint research with Sandia National Laboratories and Texas Tech University and expects to have a product ready for the commercial market in 2023.